Well, this is actually Shrove Tuesday, and I'm on my way to the cabin. Guess you can probably see some smoke. I have got the fire started. I'm going to have my Shrove Tuesday pancakes. My little squirrel's enjoying himself there at the bird table. I'm going to have my Shrove Tuesday pancakes, but they're going to be a savory variety. Um, well, an Italian uh, pancake or crepe that's used as a pasta, and I'm going to use it in a traditional Italian soup called Zuppa di Crepelli. Scrapelli, di Scrapelli. My Italian's as good as it ever was there. Anyway, I first had this soup uh, when I was working on a farm in Italy. It's traditionally, I think, made with a chicken broth, but the lady of the household was a real gourmet Italian cook, wonderful, and she did a lot of vegetarian things for me. So she did a version of this. What I'm doing is a bit different, and I guess I'll explain that as I go along, but I'll get in the cabin and get started. I'm getting hungry. I need my lunch. I'm starting the whole process by making a, a vegetable broth uh, in there. If I remember everything that I have, mostly root vegetables, well, no, some aromatic things as well, but a big carrot, just chunked up into two pieces, some celery, I had some uh, turnip, rutabaga, whatever you want to call it. I think three cloves of garlic, I didn't chop them, I just sort of crushed them, took the peeling off them, put them in there. There's a red onion, which has lost most of its color already. A couple of bay leaves, uh, some salt and pepper, and I think that's it so far. The vegetables will all be strained out. They don't uh, end up in the in the dish. I don't know if they're if they're not cooked to a complete mush. I may keep them and have them with this evening's dinner. But uh, to that, I'm going to add for some color and some flavor a little bit of tomato paste. This is an a, an Italian product also. I buy it, I guess, over in the U.S. called Amore, and it's vegan. I'm not vegan, but it's it's vegan. It's completely vegetarian. The tomato paste or just uh, adds a nice color in the end and a nice rich flavor as well. And also, I get the tube off it. I have another tube by the same company, and it's a hot chili pepper paste. I think in Italy uh, they would have used pepperoncino. Pepperoncino is on the table for every meal, at least with the families that I stayed with. Um, I brought a couple of containers of it home, and I still have one that uh, hasn't been opened, but it's from 2007, I don't know. A little leery of opening it, I guess, so I haven't. Anyway, I'll let that continue to cook for a while, boil down a bit. In the meantime, we'll get ready to make the crepes. And, well, actually, we could make the crepes while this is still doing its thing. Well, the version of this uh, Zuppa di Scrippelli that I'm making sort of has a stuffed crepe, and you'll see what I mean as I go along. They don't all have this. Actually, the one that I had in southern Italy, uh, the uh, crepes were cut into sort of long strips, rolled and then sliced, so they ended up in being in long strips, and that uh, made them sort of like a, a pasta, a noodle in the in the broth. It was very good. The first time I'd ever seen anything like that done. This is fresh Italian parsley out of my light garden. It's wonderful to have fresh herbs this time of year. Another cold night last night. It was minus 15 here last night. And when I left the house, it is minus four right now. So it's warmed up a bit. Lots of strength in the sun this time of year. Just check this thing here. It doesn't, I can't give you the outside temperature here because the outside sensor is uh, inside of that covering with the fig trees. Anyway, it's three degrees under the fig trees right now. It's 10 in here, starting to warm up with that fire going. Um, and last night when it went to minus 15 under the fig tree, it went to, under the covering for the fig tree, it went to minus one, which is in theory quite all right. Um, it uh, will withstand quite a bit of frost. 
Time will tell. I'm anxious now for spring to arrive so that I can see if it actually, I'm going to get a fig out of this or not. This is a block of Parmigiano Reggiano. Good old Costco. This is the real thing from Italy. I'll give you, whoa, knocking things around here. I'll give you the ingredients for the crepes. I've already mixed it up when I finish this. I'll tell you what's most in them. It's it's a savory crepe. There isn't any butter and there isn't any any milk. Um, so it's actually with eggs and uh, flour, water, and a, a bit of salt. So it's basically the same ingredients that would be used to make pasta, which is why I guess they, they use it as a type of pasta. Anyway, that and quite a, quite a bit of cracked pepper mix up the filling. I think that will be enough for the few crepes that I intend to do anyway. Even try to save a little bit of it to uh, sprinkle on top of the soup. As I said, I've already mixed the crepe batter. And I'll give you both the ingredients that I've used and uh, the recommended quantities in case you want to make a larger batch here. Recommended is three eggs, one cup of flour, two cups of water, and one teaspoon of salt. And I cut that down to two-thirds of the recipe, so there's two eggs. Uh, two-thirds of a cup of flour, one and a third cups of water, and I put three-quarters of a teaspoon of, of salt in. It makes a lot of crepes because you can probably see there it is much more runny, watery than the traditional crepe batter, so it will make a lot of very thin crepes. Now let's get over to the stove and fry a few. Hopefully you can see that the pan seems to be about half in sunlight, I guess, or half in the light. There's no oil of any kind in the mix, so I am spraying the pan with one of those oil products. That one is the, I think probably the first one that came out called Pam. And be careful I don't get too much batter in this. But Should have the pan a little hotter or not. We'll let the first one go like this anyway and see what it's, see what it's like. Starting to come away there, I think. Oh, it's still pretty white on the other side. I need a little bit more heat here. Hard to regulate this little thing. gonna move you over to the table now so I can show you what happens in the next part of the process when I'm ready to take this okay. off. I guess we're ready to go here. And you just sprinkle this with 
some of the cheese and pepper and uh, parsley. That will do. And while it's still hot, you roll it in as tightly as you can roll it. Do a cigar or a sausage or whatever you want to call it. And the heat that's still in the crepe will cause the uh, cheese to, well, not really melt, but soften just a little bit, and that will hold it together. I'll make two or three more, and then come back and show you the next step here. Well, I made three crepes, which is probably more than I should be having. And there's enough of that batter left to, well, I don't know, make probably a dozen more. And what you do now is just cut them into little rounds. As I said before, the one that I had in southern Italy, the lady cut these into rounds, but she didn't stuff them, and they were used like a noodle in the soup, and it was very good. These, I'm sure, will fall apart. You don't put them in the, back in the soup that's boiling on the stove. You put these in a bowl and, and ladle the broth over them, but still, I'm sure they will come apart a bit in the process. Well, I'll get the vegetables strained out of the broth and sit down and try this. Okay. The broth looks good. I haven't tasted it yet. And top that off with just some of the leftover parsley and cheese and we'll give it a try see what this is like I can get around the corners here well they didn't fall apart too badly mmm the broth is very good Got a little zing from the hot chili paste. Taste the basil leaf in there and the garlic. You don't need to watch me eat the whole thing, but that is Zuppa di Scriperli. So, hope you give it a try. And these are my Shrove Tuesday pancakes. Well, I've enjoyed a couple of three good hours out here. I guess about two hours and a half or so. Fire got everything nicely warm. Actually, it's 
25 degrees in here now, but I've been letting the fire go out for the last half hour or so. I had my lunch. The soup was quite good. I've had a cup of tea and done some reading. And now that the days are longer, I can still get my walk in this afternoon. It's uh, about 20 to 3, I guess. So if I usually do about a two and a half hour walk and it's now 6.30, going on for 7 o'clock before it really starts to get very dark. So spring hopefully is on the way. Anyway, after my walk, I'll do a little filming in the in the grow room and put this together and get it up for this week's video. Well, if you're also subscribed to Gary Entropy, you're now sitting there scratching your head saying, did they plan that, the two of them? <laughs> I just finished making my video out in the cabin of my Italian uh, pancake soup, crepe soup. Came in and was editing and whatever and uh, noticed that Gary had uploaded the video, so I went and watched his. <laughs> And he had just uploaded a video of a German pancake soup. And there's quite a bit of similarity between the two. Uh, no planning there. It just happened. But it's really quite strange that it happened with, on two sides of the Atlantic here at the same time, the same day. Anyway, I'm going to give you a little quick look around here in the, in the grow room. But before I do, I wanted to discuss this product. Come a little closer. Maybe you can see the labeling. It's a fish emulsion liquid fish fertilizer with seafood seaweed extract. But anyway, the, it's made in PEI. I think it's an excellent product. I've just started using it and already I can see where the plants are benefiting from it. Uh, it's uh, 240, the numbers on the thing. But they, it came in two different kinds, deodorized and then just the ordinary stuff. So since I was going to use it in the house, I selected the deodorized one. Well, if this is deodorized, I don't want to be around the one that they didn't do any deodorizing on. This, uh, like I say, I think it's working quite well. The plants seem to have really perked up since I started feeding it to them. But this room now smells like somebody's old bait shack. Anyway, let's take a little look at the plants here. Well, if you watched my last video, over the last video that I did some looking around here in the in the grow room, there was something that came up in one of the banana, in the plot that I had the banana seeds in, and I said I felt that it was a weed, but I wasn't pulling it out because I wasn't certain. Well, what you're looking at now is one of the pots that has, uh, the grow bags rather, that has the goji berries in it. And that is the exact same weed that's come up in it, and it's the same soil. So I'm just about to pull the thing that's in with the bananas out of there. And so far there is nothing up in either the bananas, the coffee, or the olives. So I won't bother showing those to you again. But pull back here a little to show you that the goji berries are continuing to do well since they were transplanted. And next to them on the left, those are the Thai chilies, and they've been pruned twice. Um, not quite ready for a third pruning yet, but they're also looking nice and healthy. Now I'll move over here and give you a look at the calendula. I don't think once again under these lights that you're getting the true color. It's a really dark golden color. I turned a little bit out of the light if that makes any difference or not. Anyway, there's one blossom open, and I count at least eight more buds that have come along. So the, the calendula in the hydroponics is doing quite well. On the back there is the round black Spanish radish. And I still haven't delved down below to see whether it's developing a bulb yet, but it's got nice foliage. And in front of that, once again, are the broadleaf chives, which are not very broadleaf. They're kind of spindly. I'm quite pleased with the way all of the rest of the peppers are developing. The first four that you see there, two in front and two in back, are cayenne. And the next four are called um, hmm, large balm, cherry balm, something like that. Anyway, they're, they're a cherry-type 
hot pepper uh, the size of a golf ball or a little bit bigger and they turn a nice red when they're ripe and they have a, a nice heat to them they're not not cruel or painful or anything but they have a very nice heat they're nice pickled and, and I'm really pleased with the color now that the foliage has turned and and uh, they've also been pruned twice and they're not quite ready for a third pruning yet but I think they'll get at least one more pruning before it's time to transplant them out in the hoop post sometime in May. Well that concludes the look around here in the in the grow room and thank you very much for watching.